Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. We have created a video tutorial explaining how to control DC motors by using FPGAs, Verilog and Vivado. In the tutorial we provide a detailed explanation on how to control the speed of rotation of the DC motor as well as the direction of rotation by generating pulse width modulation signals and by using digital outputs. A link to the video tutorial explaining how to control the motor is given in the description below this video. In this video tutorial we provide a brief demonstration. We are using these three switches to control the motor. When we say to control the motor we mean two things. We mean the control of the speed of rotation or the RPM of the motor and the control of the direction of rotation. Namely, to start the motor we need to press the first switch. Consequently, to turn off the motor we need to turn off the first switch. So let's start the motor. To change the direction of rotation of the motor, we need to use the second switch. Currently, the motor is rotating clockwise. To change the angle of rotation, or better to say to change the direction of rotation, we need to press the second switch. And now you can see that the motor is rotating counterclockwise. Then, we are using the third switch to control the speed of rotation. Over here we have implemented two modes, low speed mode and high speed mode. To start the high speed mode we simply need to press the third switch and now you can see that the motor is rotating much faster. Then we can change the direction by simply using the second switch and we can play around then we can turn off the motor and the motor stops. To do that again we use the first switch and now we start the motor again. And let's go back to the low speed mode by using the third switch etc. Let us briefly talk about the experimental setup. The experimental setup is relatively simple. Over here we are using the Nexus A7 FPGA in fact, we are using the model 100T and to control the motor we are using this PMOD port. This PMOD port can provide digital outputs as well as the ground. To control the motor speed of rotation and the direction we are using these three pins. And these three pins and their wiring diagram will be explained in the video tutorial. Here, we will just briefly explain the main principle. These three pins are attached to the motor driver shown over here. On one side, the motor driver accepts the control signals from these three FPGA pins. Then, on the other side, the motor driver is attached to the power supply and the power supply is shown over here. You can see the voltage, you can see the current consumption and you can see the current power. Then the motor driver has the third port and the third port shown over here is connected to the motor. Two pins of this PMOD port are used to control the direction of rotation and the third pin is the actual pulse width modulation pin that's used to control the speed of rotation. We are using the oscilloscope shown over here to visualize the generated pulse width modulation signals. Namely, we used an oscilloscope probe and the oscilloscope probe is attached to the pulse width modulation as well as to the ground of our FPGA. Now, what is interesting to observe over here? 
If I increase the speed of rotation, over here on the oscilloscope screen, you can see that the width of the pulse width modulation signal increases. That is, longer is the width or longer is the length of the width, higher the speed of rotation of the motor. So if I go back to the low speed mode, you can see the width of the pulse over here. Behind the scene, there is a Verilog program that controls everything. To be more precise, the Verilog program is not actually controlling what's happening behind the scene. The Verilog program is used to implement a sequential and combinatorial digital circuit that implements the control algorithm. And that's the main idea. One of the main issues when controlling DC motors is how to generate pulse width modulation signals. Namely, you need to select the frequency of the pulse width modulation signal as well as the duty cycle. After some experimenting, we have selected the frequency of, as you can see over here, 100 Hz. We can go a little bit lower or a little bit higher. However, the precise value of the pulse width modulation frequency is not strictly defined. You need to perform a lot of trials and errors and maybe you will have to even measure the torque produced by the motor or something else to get some curve or you can contact the producer of the motor to get the proper values. However, in our case we are using a very low cost DC motor which is maybe 10 or 15 dollars and we could not find a detailed specs. Since the control algorithm is implemented as a combinatorial and sequential digital circuit, there are only very small, small, small delays in the execution of the algorithm. These delays come from the period of the FPGA clock. However, the period of the FPGA clock is 10 nanoseconds. Also, there are small delays that come from propagation of signals from one part of the circuit to another. However, these delays are even shorter. And that's one of the main advantage of using FPGAs compared to microcontrollers. And you can see again how, the, how everything works. Another interesting thing over here is that whenever I try to press these two buttons, that is the second one and the third one, while the button one is off, nothing will happen. And as you will see in the tutorial, we use the case statement to provide this functionality. And this is the safety mechanism. However, if I press both second and third, and if I press the first one, I immediately go to the fastest rotation mode. And then again, we can change rotation. Another interesting thing to observe over here is that we can change the voltage that's being sent to the motor. This motor should be rated for 12 volt. However, we can go even faster if you want. Here you can also see the current consumption. So for example, if I put some load here on the main shaft, you can see how the current increases and you can see the power over here. Here you can see the experimental setup from another angle. So let's start the motor rotation. First switch is on. First switch is off to stop. First switch is on. Then let's change the direction of rotation. For that purpose we are using the second switch. And let's increase the speed of rotation. And of course, over here in the background, you can see how the width of the pulse width modulation signal is changing once we go from the low speed to the high speed mode. And over here, we can change 
the rotation direction. It's very nice to play with this experimental setup and it's very satisfying once you implement everything. In the video tutorial we will explain how to implement everything in Verilog. And the code is super interesting. In fact, the code has a little bit different logic compared to C or C++ or Python code. And you will see that later on. The nice thing about the code is that you can precisely get access to the FPGA clock. This enables you to precisely define the pulse width of your pulse width modulation signal as well as the duty cycle and as well as the frequency of the pulse width modulation signal. Over here you can see that we are generating pulse width modulation signals with 100 Hz. However, you can change that. Over here you can see the close view of the motor. It's a super low cost DC motor. Then here is the motor driver. This is a standard motor driver that you can find in almost any low-cost robotic kit. I will provide the specs in the video tutorial. Then here are the connectors on the breadboard and here are the pins of my FPGA.